Kelly from The Energy Boutique with your energy forecast for September 2021. Hello, Scorpio. So September is going to be quite a month for you. Now, granted, you are moving into your dark season as you approach your birthday season, which typically means that, you know, things feel a little choppy. They feel like they're coming together, but they also feel like they're falling apart at the same time. We're definitely being pushed and pulled between wanting to stay in the fixated state of comfortability, but also knowing that we see huge amounts of abundance and opportunity coming for us if we're just able to let go and actually take a risk, actually jump forward into what is unfamiliar and unpredictable. So starting right out of the gate, we have this new moon in Virgo taking place on the 6th. This is going to be highlighting your 11th house. So the new moon in Virgo, of course, wants us to set seeds down, plant seeds, plant new intentions of what it is that we want to see over the next lunar cycle. Because this is Virgo energy, this is about manifesting. This is about bringing things to life. This is about reorganizing and restructuring our physical realms, what is required of us in the tasks and chores of our day to day life and where it is that we're being of service to other people. Now, this is going to be a game changer because our perspectives are changing at a very accelerated rate because this is rooted in the 11th house for you. The 11th house is visionary. We are downloading new perspectives of the future. We are dreaming a bigger dream. We are looking at where it is that we felt held back, restricted, confined in our life, and we are busting those boundaries as we break free. We're looking for new independence. We're looking for new freedom. And that particular energy connected to the new moon in Virgo, you best believe that we are going to manifest a brand new chapter, a brand new reality in record time. The 11th house is also about connections and connections can be, of course, romantic partners, friendships, community, and basically using technology to find like-minded people. This is going to be a great thing if your job, if your career is connected to a greater, grander audience you will likely have a brand new foundation built of the amount of people that you're able to reach with your wisdom, with your knowledge. Regardless, pay attention to who is coming into your life at this particular point in the calendar because they are divinely scripted to cross your path at this particular point in your life. There are new things unfolding, new foundations being built, new soul contracts being initiated, and the people coming into your life at this time are going to be very encouraging and very supportive of your new vibration, your new dream, and your new vision. On the 10th, we have Venus, the goddess of love and beauty and pleasure and worth and money, moving into Scorpio, illuminating your first house. So here's the thing. Although we're going to get a blast of beautiful, glowy energy of Venus taking up her spot in our first house, we do have to recognize that this is going to put a huge intensity on our emotions and desires where relationships are concerned. We are definitely reevaluating our own worth, our own value, where it is that we're leveling up. And because of that, now, because we are kind of raising our own frequency and vibration, we're taking a look at our existing relationships to see who is coming with us. There are many relationships that we are connected to right now that we keep people at a distance. Why? Because they suck the energy right out of us. Our life force is depleted every minute that we spend in these people's environments. What we have to do now is recognize that Venus wants to show us what it is that we love, who it is that we love, and where it is that we can incorporate more of that in our life. Because this is happening in our first house of self, we likely will be more romantic, more flirty, more focused in on really deciphering in our psyche, in our heart space, what it is we actually want in a partner, where it is that intimacy rules for us and where it is that we block our own connections to the right kinds of people. Venus moving into Scorpio, especially in the first house, 
is going to make us feel amazing. Although we are in our dark season, although we will not be feeling our best self until our birthday, this is going to give us a good glimpse on where it is that when we level up our own worth, our own value within ourselves, that that vibration just illuminates a brand new frequency out to the world. Be very cautiously aware of the people that you're attracting because this is going to be a good indicator, a good mirror to you on how much work it is that you've actually done within yourself. On the 14th, we have Mars, your co-ruler, moving into Libra. Now, this is going to be a sudden shift for you because Mars, of course, is a co-ruler. Anytime Mars is on the move, Scorpios feel that just as dramatically as Aries people do. Of course, Aries is primarily ruled over Mars. So what do we need to know here? Well, Mars rules over our physical energy, our drive, our passion, even our anger. Now, moving into Libra, this is going to be a little bit more of the mental plane. That Libra in energy, of course, wants us to see the pros and cons in every situation, wants us to be a little bit more passive aggressive with how it is that we take action, make things happen. Mars is very focused on relationships and pursuing new wants, needs and desires where connection is concerned and compounded with Venus now in Scorpio, you best believe that this is a magical recipe for attracting the right kinds of people into your life that not only could be romantic partners, but could be very good business partners as well. Mars in Libra wants us to fight for what is right, for what is fair, to reestablish balance in our lives. This is going to be illuminating your 12th house. The 12th house is the spiritual house. It is the house where we retreat, where we kind of move inwards and where we examine the shadow parts of ourselves. This is going to be a good energy, though, because Scorpios are no stranger to shadow selves. We love diving into the darkness. We love analyzing our thoughts, our behaviors, our patterns right to death so that we can illuminate those darker past pain and trauma patterns to the light and use them as a source, as a catalyst, as a fuel to really put the fire all the way up for us to make some major changes. Mars in Libra, especially in this spiritual house, is really going to help you find a new practice in order to balance the roles and responsibilities in your life, especially the pressure in your mental plane, in the mental narrative. Just when things get dark, we have the ability as Scorpios being water signs to attach to our higher selves, to attach to our intuition and overwrite the negative narrative that our ego wants us to stay in. Of course, that shadow part of ourselves gets turned up very loud. Mars is very aggressive, but also in Libra just wants to balance the scales between what is practical and what is magical. We have to allow ourselves to dream, but we also have to incorporate the facts, the statistics, the logic, the practicality into the equation. So this is going to be a great time to pursue new contracts. This is going to be a great time to pursue new relationships, to be a little bit more aggressive in sharing your thoughts and emotions with other people. And realistically, this is going to be a great time to do some shadow work and really prepare for the new solar energy coming with our birthday season. On September 20th, we have the full moon taking place in Pisces. This is going to be illuminating your fifth house. So what does this mean? Well, we have to rewind to the beginning of the year. We had, of course, our new moon in Pisces around February-ish. And at that particular time, we had a totally different mindset on what we thought we were setting out to accomplish and many of us have been illuminated over the past month or so that we're no longer aligned with those dreams, with those visions. We are detaching from the path that we thought we were initiating at the beginning of the year to align with something more powerful, with more meaning, with more purpose. And because this full moon is all about releasing, we have to understand that we're disconnecting from a lot of the dreams, visions, thoughts, feelings that we had at the beginning of the year. Because this is Piscean energy, Scorpio is a sister water sign to Pisces. 
This is going to be very emotional, but highly intuitive. There's likely new visions going to be downloaded in our crown, in our mental plane. And because this is the fifth house in our heart space, that fifth house wants us to lighten the mood again, wants us to be a little bit more playful, wants to tap into our creativity, wants us to be a little bit more romantic, basically wants us to break the walls down around our heart space so that when these divinely scripted people cross our path, that we don't scare them away, that we actually give them the opportunity to come into our realms to provide us with the love, the connection, the intimacy, the playfulness, the romance, the creativity that we've been praying for. Scorpios have a tendency to keep everybody at arm's distance, and this is no time for that. Uranus just went retrograde in Taurus, highlighting the seventh house. And this is really putting a huge emphasis on us putting the guard down to let new partners, new romantic partners, new friendships, new business partners actually be able to enter our realm. Because Scorpio energy is so private, we tend to keep everyone away. We are not doing ourselves any kind of service by doing this. And we are reaching a breaking point right before our birthday season where we have to learn to let people in. On the 22nd, we shift out of Virgo season and into Libra season. Now, Libra season is going to lighten the mood just a tad. There is going to be a lot of focus on relationships, a lot of focus on fairness, a lot of focus on being social. And for you, this is going to be illuminating your 12th house. The 12th house is the spiritual house. It is soul contracts, endings before new ones can begin. It is soul connections. It is your spiritual practice. It is also your mental health and everything that you keep hidden. So there is going to be a little bit of a push and pull here because it's going to highlight for you where it is that you've been living in extremes and where it is that you have to put major energy and attention into finding a balanced grounding point to bridge the gap between those extremes and start living very happily in joy and happiness and pleasure. Scorpio tends to be on the darker side of life, really kind of familiar with pain and trauma. This is going to be a time to review those particular experiences in your life and really kind of illuminate them to the light to see where it is that we can use our past pain and trauma as a catalyst to push us forward. We have to keep in mind that Mars will also be in this house in Libra and energy. So there's a lot of push in order for us to come out of our comfort zones, to leave the past behind, to abandon the old narratives of what has happened to us, the old storylines, the old contracts, and at least prepare our heart chakra for new happiness and joy to enter into our lives. That's going to be even more reinforced with this huge healing opportunity taking place uh, towards the end of the month where your fifth house and your eighth house are going to be on focus. It's that heart chakra. And of course, that eighth house that Scorpio naturally rules over is where death takes place, is where transformation takes place, is where renewal and rebirthing takes place. And you best believe that our heart chakras are going to be going through a deep, dark transformation to purge all the pain, all the trauma, all the emotional baggage that we use as an excuse to keep those walls tall and thick. We are going to be crumbling those walls down one section at a time because we know that we crave connection. We crave intimacy. We crave being attached to the right kinds of people, but yet even if they were knocking on our door right now, we are too bogged down with all of the pain and trauma of the past to even consider to let them in. We have on the 27th, Mercury going retrograde in Libra. This is also going to be highlighting your 12th house. As you can see here, there are a lot of things ending. There are a lot of patterns being broken. There's a lot of narratives being rewritten. There's a lot of timelines being closed. There's a lot of soul contracts that are up for renewal. Mercury, of course, is the ruler of the mental plane, slowing us down, 
making us look back, making us feel like we have to review some of our actions. And because this is in Libra and energy, we're taking a good look at our past relationships. Because this energy is built up in the 12th house, you best believe you're going to have flashbacks from previous relationships, good, bad, and ugly, as if you were in a war. PTSD is a real thing when it comes to relationship flashbacks because all those repressed memories and emotions that have, you have put very deep down inside the depths and darkness of you are coming up for renewal, for purging, for release. We cannot continue to carry this emotional traumatic baggage into the present moment and into the future. Many of our prayers involve allowing new people into our lives, bringing true connections, bringing true relationships, bringing authentic like-minded people into our lives that we can create bonds with that are encouraging, that are supporting us in our dreams and visions. But again, we wouldn't let them in if they knocked on our door. Mercury going retrograde in Libra is also going to bring up a lot of soul contract issues. Again, very rooted in relationships, but also really revisiting some lessons that we thought we were done with. This 12th house really does illuminate testing to see whether or not we learned our lesson, giving us an opportunity to either repeat the past, thinking that we're going to get a different outcome or choosing to abandon even having anything to do with that situation and evolving using our observer mentality to see, hey, I've been in this situation before. Here's how I acted. Here's how I handled it. Here was the outcome. I'm going to do things totally different this time. And that is how we break the cycle. That is how we break the bond. That is how we break soul contracts. So a couple of the messages coming in from the universal guides for you to concentrate on as you move through the month of September. First of all, they're talking about a brand new foundation being built. I feel like for a lot of Scorpios, this has a lot to do with the home and the family foundation. It also has a lot to do with the career, new opportunities being presented. Of course, when we advance in our career, when we reach a new level of authority, new roles, new responsibilities, new levels of income and abundance, that gives us the opportunity to feel safe, secure in our home life, in our family unit. This gives us the opportunity to change, to renovate, to upgrade, or to totally move into a new foundational home that we can have a new family energy in. This is very much about creating new foundations in everything that we do. But of course, the beginnings of that start in our heart space and start in our mental plane. Once we kind of revisit and review some of the blockages that we ourselves have been putting forth to preventing us from moving forward, we will see that when we get rid of that residual energy, we free the vibration and frequency up and we start manifesting new foundations in our career, in our home life at a very rapid pace. I feel like for the most part, we're going to have to revisit a lot of our social conditionings that we were gifted with in our childhood. A lot of this is going to be connected to daddy issues. Okay. Many of us, I don't care if you're a female, if you're a male, I don't care if you're straight or if you choose a different partner, it does not matter who you align yourself with. We all bring qualities and characteristics from the people, normally our parents that we were raised under. We bring those quality characteristics into our personal relationships. Many of us have attracted partners that mimic to us the shadow parts of our parents. If we felt unworthy, undeserving, unvalidated from one parental figure over the other, you best believe that we are going to attract those particular partners in our lives. I feel like because we have all of this energy in the 12th house, really reviewing, really reflecting the spiritual soul contracts, I feel like there's a lot of parental, most importantly, masculine energy daddy issues coming to the forefront that these aha moments, these insights, this perspective change is going to illuminate a lot of the situations that we're currently in with the relationships that we're currently engaged in. 
when we start to see people from a different set of eyes connecting the dots, seeing the similarities of the qualities and characteristics that we were raised under, then we have a different perspective to work with. Then we know better. And when we know better, we can do better. This is going to put us in a situation where we're going to have to emotionally sit down and think about what it is we actually want. With Venus and Scorpio and all of this 12th house action, you best believe that many of us are not happy with our current situation, especially with our romantic situation. There are a lot of choices and decisions on the table. We have to do a deep dive into our psyche, into our heart space in order to figure out why it is that we attract the people that we do, what it is we actually want, need and desire and why it is that we don't seem to attract those particular qualities and characteristics. There's a lot of aha moments that will be emerging throughout the month of September. And it is our job to make sure that we're constantly asking ourselves, does this bring me closer to or further away from what it is that I'm dreaming about, what it is that I'm visualizing and what it is that I actually want to manifest. So that is your September forecast, Scorpio. I hope you have a great month. We'll talk to you soon.